Hi guys, I just want to take a minute before I start this video to tell you that I my heart goes out to everyone who is affected by the recent events that are happening this year. Um, I'm really uh, concerned about a lot of people and so I just want to let you guys know that before I get started. And one update before I start is that besides the fact like ignore the intro that says every other thir every Thursday because I actually am posting every other Thursday until I get myself on a better schedule um, for me. But with that, let's get started on what I hope to be the first installment of a long episodic series where I'm titling it The Moments That Made Movies. With the recent events and COVID-19 running rampant throughout the world, a lot of creatives are asking the question, what's, how is this going to affect the creative industry? And I thought it would be a good idea to look back on major events that happened in history and how that affected the movie industry at large. Because no matter what we say, history does repeat itself more often than not. If you don't know what 9-11 is, 9-11 was this um, event that happened in America. There were two planes carrying multiple civilians and passengers and then people who were working in the trade centers and there were um, some bombers on the plane who had set a bomb and took over the cockpit and bombed the Twin Towers in New York. It was a very catastrophic and so many people have passed away from it and it still affects America today and a lot of other nations as well. During the event, a lot of people passed away and a lot of people lost their lives during that event. What a lot of people see as an immediate change to um, American airlines is the security measures that they undertake to get somebody on a plane so that there wouldn't be another event just like that. Before then, people would literally walk up to their gate and that was it. And people could come and wait for people at their gate and it would be fine. But right now we cannot uh, do that because of the events that happened during 9-11. And I understand if you are one of the people who is very greatly affected by one of these events that if you don't watch this video at all, nothing against you. Feel free to take care of yourself and whatever that may entail. But 9-11 was this huge event that happened and I'm very curious to understand what kind of movies came out um, in the three years after the event happened. So I had a lot of difficulty trying to figure out how to rank movies that came out during the three years that came after 9-11, um, and I decided to go with more. So I was trying to figure out how to rank movies that came out in the three years after 9-11. That was a little bit difficult because I didn't want to give an unfair advantage towards movies that I was more familiar with and then um, movies that I just really liked and not a lot of other people liked and different things like that. So I tried different ways. Um, popularity contests are never a good way to start out a ranking system or to rate them. So I nixed that idea and went on to something a little bit more concrete and that led me to the box office revenue that movie uh, studios would report back to the general public. So with the box office numbers I was able to look up those and then figure out what was what had the highest amount of box office um, tickets sold and this isn't just in America this is the this is worldwide. Obviously if you have a big budget your box office payoff is going to be better. So there is a little bit of um, a curve and towards blockbuster movies and stuff like that. But a couple of indies did make their way into the top 10. So the three years after 9-11 would be 2002, 2003, and 2004. The top movie of 2002 was Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, which is understandable. But in that listing is also Spider-Man, Harry Potter, The Chamber of Secrets, there's Men in Black, Star Wars Episode II, um, and then there was this M. Night Shyamalan movie called Signs. I don't know if you guys know that one, but it's a pretty good movie. Um, and then My Big Fat Greek Wedding was also in this, that it, one indie film made its way into the top 10. And then in 2003, another Lord of the Rings movie came out, The Return of the King. Uh, the Matrix, Reloaded, and Revolutions came out that year as well. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. But also what happened from this is Finding Nemo and Last Samurai. Both are amazing movies. I find it very interesting that Finding Nemo came out during that time, but we're gonna keep moving on to 2004. And the top movies of 2004 include, the top one is Shrek 2, which I was very surprised about. Um, I don't really want to explain it, so I'm just gonna, you know, wave that for a minute. <laughs> Another Harry Potter movie came out, Spider-Man 2 came out, but also Ocean's 12, The Passion of Christ, The Incredibles, Shark Tale, Troy, a lot of different 
very good movies came out in 2004. So you can see a little bit more originality and creativity as the years go on after um, the event of 9-11. Out of the movies that I did list, you may have noticed a lot of sequels and continuations of a series. Harry Potter, and then Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, the Men in Black franchise, and the uh, Bad Boys movies were going on that time. And then The Matrix. I don't know how they released two in the same year, but apparently they did. But this is showing a little bit of a creative stagnation in terms of originality. I'm not saying any of those series are bad. I'm just saying that people were creating and marketing things that were familiar and, you know, continuations of series and stuff that they already knew how to do. And they were just developing those storylines and expanding the universe. There's nothing bad about Harry Potter, or Lord of the Rings, or any of those franchises that I was just talking about. But there were also some good movies, some original content that came out. I mentioned My Big Fat Greek Wedding. That was an indie that made a lot of money and it's a very good movie if you haven't seen it. It's really fun. And then Pixar started up again with Finding Nemo and The Incredibles. Both movies were very, very successful and very good. Seeing those lists just gives me a better understanding of the general public and creatives at large after a big like that and how much history impacts the movie industry and the creatives people tend to run to the familiar when it's a big event that happens people tend to go towards the familiar favorites or whatever they know is concrete huge life-changing events don't happen all the time but when they do they go towards creative things that are familiar. And that just shows me how much history impacts creativity, even if it's just providing audiences with some familiarity. I can go into an even deeper analysis into the individual movies that I've listed or I found listings of. I just wanted to show you um, how moments in history impact movies. So the question for the week today, or for two weeks, whatever, the question for this video is what movie had an impact on you? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great end of Thursday. I will see you on the other side of the screen.